Hey, folks, I'm in my commercial kitchen today. I was packaging some honey fermented garlic, and I got to thinking about the many emails I've received, a lot of which deal with this particular product. And they asked me, how do you make sure this stuff is safe when you package it? So today, I'm going to show you how simple that is and what I do. So join me and let's take a look. Hey folks, this is Phil with Alabama Hot Sauce. That's alabamahotsauce.com on the web. I'm in the commercial kitchen today and I have spent the morning jarring up garlic fermented in honey. This is a really, really good product for me. It's one I love a lot. And it's one I get a lot of questions and a lot of emails about. People quite often will, will email me and say, Hey, I've fermented some garlic and honey. It's really, really, really liquidy. It is really turning brown. Is it safe? How do you package it to make sure it's safe? So I thought I would show you today. I've already been packaging for about four hours. I've packaged several hundred jars of it. I saved out 12, and I saved out a little bit of the garlic, and I'm going to show you what I do. Now, this is very, very simple. I have garlic that's been fermented in honey for 90 days. It has then been in cold conditioning for about nine months. So this is really, really, really good, solidly fermented, uh, honey fermented garlic. Down below me, I have the, what is now culinary garlic that is a result of that fermentation. It's no longer thick like it once was when it was pure garlic. It's now really thin and watered down because of the moisture that fermentation has taken out of the, the, the garlic here. Now, in front of me, I've also got a dozen 12-ounce jars. One of the issues with preserving any food item for shelf stability is it's really a, a three-pronged thing. There either has to be such low available water in the food product that no pathogen would be able to grow. Or it has to be an acidity level below which no pathogen can grow. And it has to be packaged in such a way that any pathogens that were in the container prior to the sealing are also killed. It can be one or two of these things or a combination of all three of them. In our situation here, we have we started with pure honey and garlic. The pure honey had a very, very low water activity. Uh, garlic is only about 13% water. Most garlic is under uh, 0.40 water activity. So that is uh, really, really, really low. Nothing can grow in that. That is why gunnick is considered to be safe forever. Now, once you add moisture to that honey, as is the case when you ferment, because the moisture comes out of this garlic into the honey, it then takes on a higher moisture water activity, and you then run the risk of pathogen growing. Even though I don't think it's up at the 0.85 level for water activity that is dangerous, I know it's much, much higher than the raw honey. So now we're going to revert to counting on acidity to protect the food. When you ferment honey, the acidity will get down to about 4.4, 4.5, 4.6, somewhere in that neighborhood. Even though honey starts out more acid than that because it gets watered down, it's less acid. To, to create the amount of acid we need in this jar, we need to add some acid to it. Now, in addition to that, we have to achieve a particular pH. I'm going to be jarring this fermented garlic without any kind of hot filling or sterilization effort in the jar. That can be done for food items whose pH is 3.3 and below. 
So what I've done is I've done some, some qualitative tests, some standardization tests, to figure out what I need to add to this jar to guarantee, in my case, I was shooting for a pH of 3.0. You can add many things. The common thing to add is vinegar. Vinegar works really good. It lowers the pH pretty good. Uh, makes it very acid. The problem is it tastes like vinegar. The other common one is lemon juice. Lemon juice works really good at reducing pH. It kind of tastes good, but most people don't want a lemon taste in their fermented garlic. And you can also use powdered food derivatives. You can use ascorbic acid or the most popular one is citric acid. Now what I've determined, if you notice these jars, you'll see that this jar contains some citric acid. I've gone through each of these jars and I've put 15 grams of citric acid in each of these jars. Now, I've done a lot of statistical tests. I've tested everything from 8 grams up to 25 grams. And I've determined that at 15 grams, I can get the pH down to at least 3.0 for this product. That way, I do not have to heat treat it. I don't have to do any of the things that would possibly damage the food. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to simply put the garlic in the jars. I'm going to fill them with the runny honey that came from the ferment, and I'm going to cap them, okay? I'm going to take the first jar, and I've got my little bucket of honey here. Did pretty well drained. So I'm going to put the garlic cloves in the jar. This is a wonderful product. People love it. A lot of people are trying to do it at home. It's uh, one of the newest fads in fermenting, and rightly it should be because it's a really good product. We just sell a bundle of it at our farmer's markets on Saturdays. I mean, that's just uh, it's un unreal how much people like this. I don't make health claims on anything I make, but presumably, and the claim is, this stuff is very, very good for you. It's supposed to be good to fight... Uh, Inflammation, allergies, all kinds of things. I don't make those claims because, honestly, I don't know. But, anyway, a lot of people take it and they believe it plays a key role in their health care routine. Okay? Now, I'm wearing the thin gloves today instead of the thick uh, latex ones because I'm not trying to protect myself against any heat that you typically do when you work with peppers. I'm just trying to protect the sanitation of the food and to protect my hands from this sticky and by the way this stuff is sticky and There we go. Now, I want to go through here. As long as I get up to the first thread, this is going to have the correct amount of product in it. I do do a weighing audit after I've packaged them. But weighing this stuff as you go is almost a waste of time, so I'm not doing that. But anyway, there we are. And we have just packaged a dozen jars of garlic fermented honey. All right, we'll be right back with you, and we'll fill them. All right, folks, I'm back here with you. There's a lot of stopping, washing hands, and changing gloves, and jarring up fermented honey. I'm sorry. Just the way it is. But hey, we have to do what we have to do. In the end, we're going to have, in this case, a dozen beautiful jars. And to make it even better, we're going to have hundreds more of them waiting in the wings to be sold.
what I'm going to do is this is going to be done out of sight. I'm sorry because it just putting this thing up and getting it in a way is not good. I'm going to take my measuring cup here. I've scooped out the honey out of the fermenting bucket. And I'm going to fill these jars. You notice how liquid and runny this honey is? This is why we need the citric acid in there to lower the pH and give this stuff a little more protection. It smells wonderful. It has almost, uh, it has almost a, a whiskey smell. And part of the reason for that is it is probably very, very low, less than 1% alcohol. And the reason for that is, in addition to this being a lacto-fermentation, this is also a yeast fermentation. So some of this sugar, as a result of it being a yeast fermentation, would have probably been converted to alcohol. We've got a situation here where a very, very small amount of this is probably alcohol. And maybe that's why it has that delicious bourbon slash mead fragrance, which I think is wonderful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I had a lady at our farmer's market this past Saturday bought uh, three or four jars of this. She told me she was 84 years old and that she had been eating garlic fermented with honey since she was eight years old. And I said, how often do you eat it? She said, every single day I eat a piece of garlic fermented in honey. She said, but it's gotten where it's too much trouble for me to mess with it. So I'm just going to buy it from you. So I told her she was certainly welcome. And the last of our dozen jars here. All right. Now, what we have here is a dozen jars of absolutely beautiful honey fermented garlic. Let's uh, make sure we got the right amount of liquid in these babies. There we go. At this point, there's really only two things left to do. We got to get the caps on these things. And as you might imagine, these jars are a sticky mess. So I cleaned up my work area. I'm going to put on some more gloves. Now what we're going to do before we screw the caps on, we're going to, I'm going to wipe the edges of these jars and the thread area with uh, sanitation solution because if you put these caps on jars with sticky honey on the threads, the caps will never come off. They'll be there forever, okay? All right, so we take the first one. And we wipe it really good. There you go, folks. There's a jar of beautiful, beautiful fermented garlic in honey. Whoa. 
All right. What I do to clean these jars off because honey is sticky when it's damp and it's allowed to dry on the jars and then we get it outdoors like at a farmer's market sale and it starts to get humid, it turns just like glue. So I actually lower the temperature in the commercial dishwasher and run these things through a six minute dishwasher cycle and that tends to do the job, okay? To make garlic from it and honey, or honey from it and garlic, all you have to do is peel some fresh garlic, pour it in a container, preferably one that has a that either has a fermenting vent, fermenting valve, or one that you can burp, and fill it full of honey till the garlic's covered. And over time, that garlic and honey will ferment. And it'll it'll not only ferment, it'll be a ferment. It'll first stay fairly white. It'll then to be, begin to turn brown. And about six months into the ferment, it will start for the first time to begin to soften somewhat. Excuse me, folks. Got to change up here. Anyway, it'll begin to soften, and it then becomes a wonderful, almost candy-like uh, food that you can keep in your kitchen. My wife and I use this honey in any recipe where in the past we would have used either fresh or baked garlic, okay? This garlic is also, this fermented garlic is also very good if you put it in a pan and saute it. It has a wonderful, wonderful taste. But it is, enough of the sharpness is gone from it that you can use it where you would typically use baked garlic. So... That's a, that's a very, very good thing. Every time I walk through the kitchen, I grab a toothpick, stab one, and eat it. It's become to me a, a, a treat that I look forward to when I go upstairs to my kitchen at home. So I really love this stuff. I think you will too. Fill you some garlic. Put it in a container. A big jar, half gallon jar, quart jar, whatever you have, whatever container you have available to you. Cover it over with honey and let it sit. Every now and then you're going to have to go over and burp it unless you have a fermenting valve. And in due time, you will have honey fermented garlic. It's edible within two weeks, but it gets better and better and better up until about three months. I think it's better after it's been in cold condition for a while. Anyway, folks, there you have it. Bottling, jarring, garlic, fermented in honey. This stuff's delicious, very simple. It's got citric acid added to lower the pH. This is perfectly safe. And this, along with the jars I packaged this morning, we're going to go on sale at alabamahotsauce.com. They'll go right into inventory. And by this Saturday, folks will be buying these again from the farmer's market. I want to thank you very much for joining me. I'd appreciate it while you're here if you would subscribe to my page. Also, give me a thumbs up so YouTube will know that you enjoyed my content. And while you're here, ring that notification bell. That will tell YouTube to notify you every single time I post new content. Again, folks, Mr. Phil, alabamahotsauce.com. Thank you so much for joining me with this video, and I'll see you next time. 
Hey folks, thank you for joining me on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you'd push the logo and subscribe to my channel. While you're here, I've made a couple of video suggestions I think you might like. Once again, thank you.